So, yeah, it's, uh, we really appreciate it more than we can show right now. So I was Maddie's boyfriend and she brought me closer to Zana and Kaylee. Um, I knew Zana actually before Maddie and I met Kaylee through Maddie. I just, like, they always were amazing to be around. Zana was always so energetic and happy and just a, a beautiful soul. And Kaylee was always so strong and driven, just kind and really genuinely cared about everyone. Um, I didn't uh, get the opportunity to meet Ethan too many times, but um, from what I had heard from Maddie and all the other roommates, he was also a really great guy and just, just none of these people deserve this. Welcome back to my Mental Health and Quiet channel. My name is Hoodoo London. This is the case of the Idaho quadruple murders. May the victims rest in peace, justice for the families. This is Jake Rogan, or Rogan Jake. He was Maddie's boyfriend. What I find interesting is when Jake says that he did not know Eaton. According to what I know allegedly, Jake and, and Eaton both belong to the Sigma Chi fraternity. It doesn't seem to be a very big fraternity, so why would he say that he did not know Eaton? Or is he trying to distance himself from Eaton because he knew that Eaton had enemies like the Davids, etc. Where was Jake on the night of the quadruple murders? He's from the Sigma Chi fraternity. I'm sure he graduated by now. Just my opinion, so entertainment purpose only. God forbid when someone you love, whether it's your parents, your family members, your siblings, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your best friend, wouldn't you read the speech from your heart? so that you pay your respects while you're talking about Maddie that you're looking at the crowd. Interesting that allegedly in the 4chan article although it was from an enormous source, the person clearly said that the crime would be done within 90 minutes, that they wouldn't take any phone phones with them, and plus they were going to wait for the lights to go off. The three targets was unfortunately Maddie, Eating a Zano. They said Kaylee was just there. What is interesting in the 4chan article is the person said that Jake Rogan or Rogan Jake is going to play his part of grieving and being 
married his boyfriend. So I have a couple of questions. Where was Jake that night? He wasn't at the grub truck. We didn't hear he was in the corner club. We didn't hear he was in the corner club. Was he at the Sigma Chi party? Did he see the fight between Eaton and the other guys, allegedly? He just seems to me like he is obviously a shock. He lost his best friend, like he said, his girlfriend. But he seems to be too focused on the papers that he's reading from. For her, she was always surrounded by a good group. Um, but yeah, so I met her actually on her bid day of her freshman year. I necessarily think she was supposed to go out that night, but um, luckily she did, and I got to meet her that night. Um, meet her that night. Um, so at the uh, that school year where we got to hang out and just kind of, I got to get to know her a little bit, but I didn't really realize that I was in love with Maddie from the summer of 2020. Um, we went to McCall and I got a boat that summer and we got to spend a lot of time on the water and we floated the river and just hung out every chance we got. And then when we went back to school, I lived in an apartment and I would just always invite over the Pi Fi girls to get an opportunity to hang out with Maddie. Um, we didn't go on our first date until Valentine's Day that next school year and we went to the breakfast club in Moscow, but we didn't officially start uh, dating until April 27th that year. So Maggie was a perfectionist. Um, a good story with that would be, um, be, um, story with that would be, um, Kaylee and Maddie's birthdays. They were like a month apart and Maddie's came first and she would always get frustrated because Kaylee would always go all out and just make everything perfect for her. And it was like almost like a little competition between the two who could make the their birthdays better. And I guess it was a re repeating thing throughout the years of them knowing each other. I wonder what happened to Kaylee and Maddie when they left the grub truck. The driver said that he drove them home, but he didn't see them getting inside the house. Were they attacked outside the house? He drove them home, but he didn't see them getting inside the house. Were they attacked outside the house? It's awesome. Like D that night. D that night. Both these young girls were calling him around 10 times. Why didn't he answer? He just lives two minutes, one minute away from them. Kaylee had the most injuries. God rest her soul. She was sad to go on in many times she had deep injuries so i wonder if this was jealousy from her ex-boyfriend allegedly or boyfriend was this about money was this about love was this a crime of passion like the mayor said was it a targeted attack 
like the police kept on saying the first six weeks, was the house, the residence the target or the students the target? Why did it seem like everyone in the grub truck was plotting against these two beautiful young women made the recipes? This picture to the left is allegedly DM wearing the pink mask. At times I heard she was wearing the black mask, but it was her boyfriend, Queen Kelly, allegedly wearing the black mask. Strangely enough, the person on the right-hand side with the black ski mask was said to be Jake, Maddie's boyfriend. There were rumors going around because of his face features and the lips and all. I don't know how much we can believe of that. Actually, we can't believe much of that because this could be anyone with a ski mask. My question is, where was Jake that night? Where was Hunter that night? Where were all these people that night? Where was Jack D? Why wasn't he answering the calls? Didn't Jake, Maddie's boyfriend, know that there was a party going on in the Sigma Chi fraternity that night? Didn't he speak to his girlfriend that night? Did Kaylee and Maddie come walk, walk into something when they got home? Why was the front door left open? Does this have something to do with Kaylee's new job in Austin, Texas? The reason I say that is the LinkedIn, LinkedIn account that I showed yesterday that was deactivated. I've showed that, I believe the first time I showed that was March, April last year. But the thought of it, if it could have anything to do with transferring, making large transactions from Kaylee's Linden app to her PayPal. Or something like that. Because when you have the second plan on the Linden, Linden app, then you can actually transfer up to 500,000, half a million. And I've heard from some people, a million. When Olivia, Kaylee's sister called Moscow, Idol Police and asked, why they de disactivated her sister's Linden account. They told her that it's illegal. We did not do that. So the question is, was it the FBI that froze the account, deactivated it due to the quadruple murders? But that would have been too quick. And I don't believe it's the FBI because the FBI entered this investigation on the 17th of November. Was it Lyndon who deactivated the account? Or did someone tell someone, did someone important in Lyndon account ask Lyndon to close the app after they could have transferred or made a, a couple of transactions with large fundings in it? I'm not blaming the victims and I'm not saying that the victims were involved with crimes. But what I'm trying to say allegedly is when 
young adults at that age and they're college students, they can easily get up into things that is difficult for them to get themselves out of. We see that every time. I'm just wondering if somebody was psychologically manipulating one of the two girls or both of them since they're really close as friends. Maybe Kaylee and Maddie knew that something was going to happen that night. Maybe for all you know, they could have had a knife on the knife sheet under their mattress just in case somebody walks in. I've heard that idea before from Sarge and it does make sense at times. They could have kept the knife for protection. We don't know how the touch DNA reached there. But they should have, there would have been more blood DNA found because this was a horrific, brutal quadruple murders. So this was when Kaylee's sister, Olivia Aliveria, called in Chronicles of Olivia on YouTube and she showed her that the account was activated right up to 11.33 p.m. on the Sunday night after the girls and E were unlived. Talking about 19 hours after the girls were unlived. So this does not make sense at all. Was this about money transactions? As soon as Alvira got a notification on her phone. You can watch the previous clip I made yesterday. And as soon as she got the notification, she was driving from her house in Los Angeles to Moscow. That is when they got the news that same night. And while she was driving, she got a notification on her email that Kaylee's LinkedIn account was active. When she checked it and she tried to call her friend to show her, to tell her friend what's going on, she went back to check and it was deactivated. 19 hours. So was it someone in the house who could have done that? So if it was a total stranger like BK who did this crime, Wouldn't you expect these two young women to call the po uh, police more quicker? I can understand where feelings can get all mixed up and tangled and all that when it is someone close to you who has committed a quadruple or committed any injuries. Because people can automatically think to themselves, oh, that's my loved one, that's my child, that's my roommate, that's my best friend, I don't want to turn them in. You could get ad carried away for a second. But when this person is actually a stranger, DM who walked past you thrice, you opened your door, or actually you, you opened your to door thrice and you saw him and he passed you by. It's just rumors when we've heard experts say on TV, maybe he did not see DM. I find that difficult to believe. No matter what DM and BF need to explain. Eight, nine hours why they didn't call the police. So who was using, which of y'all were using Kaylee's Linden account? What was going on at home? Why didn't you call the police? I can't help but noticing how happy the three victims look. How genuinely happy they looked. Look at the beautiful smiles. Can't say the same about the two surviving roommates. Don't, want, don't they want justice for these four friends of theirs?
BF doesn't even want to give her a statement. She refused. Until then, she said, meet me up in Nevada and we'll talk there in Reno. BF, wasn't these supposed to be your sorority sisters, your roommates? DM, I just can't understand DM's story. And DM, where was Quinn that night? Your boyfriend. He was seen there allegedly. With ABC News, just to follow up on what she asked. So the other two roommates were there at the time of the attack? All the information that we have from our investigation is that yes, they were. Okay, but they were unhurt. That's correct. So is there any explanation as to why it took so long then for someone to call 911? You have surviving witnesses to an incident at 3 or 4 in the morning, and the 911 call didn't come until noon? And I don't think I ever said that they were witnesses. I said they were there. Um, so, you know, we don't know why that call came in at noon and not um, in the middle of the night. Um, would have we loved for that to have happened? Yes, but that then let's not panic, you know. And I remember texting Kaylee. <laughs> See if she was okay. An accident. Let's not panic, you know. And I remember texting Kaylee. Yeah. See if she was okay. And she obviously didn't ever respond. It was in the morning. <laughs>